Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 6 Premium British Aircraft Carrier Ark Royal. This is a historically significant ship that Wargaming is introducing into the game, and it's kind of exciting because we don't get this as frequently as maybe we should. However, unlike the Siegfried and the Friesland, this gameplay-wise is not as exciting as I would have hoped for. It is a... Uh, very unique. That's a that's a nice word, right? Yeah, unique. Um, it is a tier six aircraft carrier with tier four and tier five aircraft. Now the tier four aircraft is the swordfish, and the swordfish comes from obviously the biplane, and it is very slow, <laughs> and uh, it feels very slow. But at least it is accurate to a unit that was on the Ark Royal and was clearly notable in history for contributing to singing the Bismarck. So we're going to take a look at the units, the squadrons, talk about the pros and cons of the ship, and just general gameplay examples. So the Ark Royal, it uh, is a tier 6 premium British aircraft carrier. Uh, where's the other one? You know, the Indomitable, the tier 8? I have no idea. I wish I knew. I really do, <laughs> but I have no idea. I assume with the AA changes that maybe it forced the Indomitable to go under a completely redesign, and maybe they're gonna push up something like the Ark Royal to be released in a shorter amount of time so that obviously there's some premium British aircraft carrier that someone could purchase. But I'm not here saying, this is an awesome ship, great gameplay, every British aircraft carrier commander should take it out. No, it's uh, it's more historical. It's a tier 6 aircraft carrier with tier 4 aircraft. And if that doesn't scare you, it should. Because that is a big gap. And it's even bigger when you're going up against tier 8s. A tier 4 aircraft against tier 8 ships? Good luck! You can't make the squadron big enough. So here is an example of the Swordfish. This is, of course, that recognizable biplane that was used on the Ark Royal. And from a historical standpoint and an accurate sea standpoint, I really appreciate that. However, it's really slow and it takes a lot of damage. But this is the unique feature of the Ark Royal right here. This dive bomber is completely different than your typical carpet bomb mechanic that the Brits get. 8K in one run against the Leander. Now, I'll talk about why it does so much damage with the Leander, against the Leander. But this is a Tier 4 Swordfish, and it has sort of a hybrid dive bomb, carpet bomb mechanic. The bombs drop faster, and there is 36 of them. So, good luck dodging it. But unfortunately, there is no penetration whatsoever on these bombs. The bombs have 18 millimeters of penetration. 18 millimeters means that tier 8 battleships are immune to your damage because they have, at the minimum, 19 millimeters on their superstructure. So you have a very awkward design here where your dive bomber can't even be used against certain targets. Like, completely 100% immune to your damage. You might set a fire on them, but that's about all you can hope to do. Now, against other targets, like the Leander, or a lightly armored light cruiser, or even a DD, these 36 cluster bombs dropping at the rate they drop at instantly counter and does tons of massive damage. I will show you good examples of the dive bomb attacking the destroyers on the enemy team, and they're not gonna like me. They won't like me at all because it's just too easy to do damage to them. But here's the torpedo bomber. Once again, we have a swordfish. Once again, incredibly slow to the target. But it has your typical shallow torpedoes that the Brits are able to take advantage of. They do pretty good damage. You know, they're very successful. But there's nothing really to highlight here that's unique. Um, there's no gameplay loop that I would say is uh, different or you need to learn it. It's just really slow aircraft really slow low tier aircraft going against equal or higher tier in worst case scenario. Uh, we're attacking tier 7s. This is a tier 7, 6, and 5 game. And thankfully there is no immune battleships to my dive bomber damage. 
but their AA is obviously fantastic, and it ends up wiping out a significant chunk of your squadron before you ever get into a position to actually do damage. And, you know, that's just a, that's just a trait that I guess the Ark Royal will have to have, because one of those features that many players are looking for is the swordfish aspect, and the swordfish is a slow old biplane. Now, I scrambled my dive bomber squadron because I wanted to try out a dive bomb against a enemy DD. So, if you play the Brits, you've probably tried to use your carpet bomb against destroyers, but maybe they've been able to maneuver out of the way because the time that the bomb drops is so significant, there's enough time for them to actively maneuver. And at that point, what can you hope to do, right? They could do anything, literally anything. But in this example, I would love to show you exactly what the enemy can do. And I'm sure this is going to create some controversy because there's already this, there's always, there's already this uh, commentary that DDs suffer greatly against uh, aircraft carriers, more so than any other class in the game. And they are so hard countered by them that they couldn't hope to contribute anything. And I really don't think that the dive bomb squadron that they've created for the Ark Royal is going to alleviate any of those concerns. If anything, it's going to highlight this commentary and reaffirm it. And I think that's really unfortunate. I don't know that this is a good design. It would help a lot if it just wouldn't be so easy to use. I mean, we've all seen the dive bomb, probably, of the Americans and the Japanese and the British and the British they go in fast and they fly over very safely. These go in fast, they fly over very safely, and the bombs drop very quickly. And I think the reason they drop very quickly is because the penetration's awful. But as we're approaching the Shiratsuyu, you know, he's generally in this area. I have no idea exactly where he could be. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, and we found him. Okay, so normally I would have to give a massive amount of lead against a DD with my Brits. We're going to see how well, you know, probably a, a, a normal, typical lead might be. Well, we just did 4,700, and it took absolutely no effort whatsoever. You just basically have to lead the reticle the size of the ship in front of it, and magically, the bombs will all land directly near or on the ship and do anywhere from three to 5,000 damage. And even on a side attack... You might say, oh, well, this is less than ideal. It is absolutely less than ideal. But it still does a lot for no effort whatsoever. So that is a huge concern that I have with this squadron. It doesn't take any skill whatsoever to kill a DD. You will quite laugh. Uh, the, the commentary in the chat, uh, please do not repeat it, but I am laughing so much at it. Um, <laughs> uh, clearly, it is just a joke. There is no skill here. There, there's no effort. Uh, the only effort is having to wait through the 100 knot speed of flying across the map. This is probably the most disappointing part of it because it's, it's going to cause controversy. As it should, because it's a really easy mechanic to use. And it's very effective. It's almost too effective against certain targets. Remember, the tier 8 battleships are completely immune to its damage. So, of course, that's going to limit my options already in my mind. Uh, tier 7 and tier 6 battleships, well, you basically can only do damage to their superstructure. For cruisers, you can do damage to about 60% of the cruisers equal tier. Cruisers that are above tier, <laughs> good luck! They've got tons of armor, and this is the, the low-tier conundrum that Wargaming is sort of dealing with. It almost feels like the gap between Tier 4 to Tier 8 is greater than the gap between 6 and Tier 10. It's hard to use Tier 4s against Tier 8s and feel like they're adequate. The only class that it's always adequate against are DDs, you know? So the dive bomb is always going to be used probably first against DDs and they're going to feel like there's nothing they can do because quite literally there is nothing they can do. No matter how much they maneuver, dive bomb works perfectly in close range. Remember, they're swordfish, they're super slow. So I'm not expelling 
any speed boost. I'm not trying to catch up with a ship that's impossible to catch up with. I'm just merely trying to make sure that the reticle is leading the DD an appropriate amount. Basically, the length of the ship. That's all I have to do to guarantee three to 5,000 damage per attack run. That seems really easy, and it is. It is really easy. There's absolutely no skill related to it. The only skill involved with the squadron is prior research and understanding what it's good against and what it's not good against. I understand that to an extent, but I just can't get behind a squadron that literally takes no effort at all. So I, I feel like they need to change it, even though it doesn't do very well. You know, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a tier four aircraft carrier, basically as a tier six. The attack rockets are tier fives, and I appreciate that. They have good penetration on the rockets <laughs> comparatively to the dive bomb. I think it was like 25 or 28 millimeters. And they're fixed wing, so they move faster. But I was hoping that I wouldn't just be, I don't know. I was hoping that the mid-tier was not quite as simple as it seemingly is for this aircraft carrier and many aircraft carriers. You know, it's, it's basically on the opponent whether their AA is adequate enough to stop it. And as you can see, the Bayern pushed into my location and is punishing me very hard. I was spotted and... He got a ton of damage on my broadside. We're doing a dive bomb on the Bayern, and you're probably going to see, you know, minimal damage. 11 non-penetrating, 3 penetration. Basically the 3 that hit the superstructure. It's even worse against other battleships with less superstructure. The Japanese come to mind. The early to mid-tier Russians come to mind. They just don't have a lot of superstructure. And there's nothing you could do, you know, if this is the only squadron you have left, you, you pretty much are just doing chip damage against the battleships. But the squadron is so broken against DDs, I can't in good faith, even with its weaknesses to battleships, recommend it. You know, why not make it where it has more penetration, but it's harder to land? I think that would feel fair, and I don't think people would complain quite as much as they will inevitably complain about the dive bomb being so point and click. The torpedo bomber, it feels just fine. It has, you know, a good salvo. It, it consistently does good damage. It can obviously cause a flood, but so can any other torpedo squadron. The attack rockets, they have your typical British pen. They've got pretty good speed, honestly, for their tier and for their being British. I mean, it is a tier five aircraft. And it's, it's just like the Kaga in the low tier aspect, but, you know, the squadron size isn't very impressive. But I, I don't know how or why or where this was designed. Was it designed with the new AA system in mind? You know, the squadron size? Did they, did they at the last minute, switch it to something that works better with it? I don't know. I can't really say one way or the other. From my impression, this feels like an 8.4 and 8.3 aircraft carrier that was thrusted into... The new AA world, the new AA world is ruthless against aircraft carriers, as it should be, because before it was just way too easy to avoid. But this new world of AA being effective in such a such a brutal way, uh, there's not as much fun with the squadron and the aircraft carrier as maybe I would hope for. And yeah, what else can I say? You know, it's an aircraft carrier. Obviously, it's going to get hate. I'm sure the comments will get hate, but it is historically significant. It is something that existed in history and contributed. Whether that's something that you care about or not, it, it remains to be seen, obviously. It's up to you. But for me, I really like that we're getting ships that actually served in naval combat and was so renowned for it that their name lives on to this day. So I'm very happy... I think they need to release it. I think all they need to really do is just tweak the numbers slightly. And, you know, if Wargaming is going to go, well, you know, the Swordfish wasn't able to equip that. Make it up. Do something so that there is some counterplay available to DDs and that there's actual options when facing higher tier. Because you're going to face so many high tier as a tier 6. You know, tier 8s complain that they fight a ton of tier 10s. Tier 6 play a lot of tier 8s. 
obviously, if there's a lot of tier 8s to play tier 10s, it would seem to reason that there would be a lot of tier 8s to play tier 6s. And when you're playing tier, tier 8s in this Arc Royal tier 6, you're basically just spotting. Very, very slowly. That's not fun. It's not something that I would look forward to, and it certainly isn't something I can recommend. So I think that Wargaming probably needs to refine this one in particular more so than the Siegfried and the Friesland. I love those both. You know, obviously I love them because they're successful and they're powerful, and, but they can be punished. This one, I, I don't really know that it's successful. It is absolutely punished, and I don't know that the gameplay is very compelling because the one aspect that's unique is so easy to use. I mean, you just literally fly over a DD and you lead him by the ship length, or if he decides to pause, you just attack him directly, which is very easy as a dive bomb. So I would just like the gameplay to be a little bit more refined with some counterplay options and the history will speak for itself. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent and the most relevant uploads. You can choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impression, how to news related. My recruit North American invite is on the screen. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.